Hey everyone, I'm Mao. I'm a game designer working in the video game industry and welcome to the Game Design Perspective. Before we begin, quick disclaimer, everything I'm going to be talking about in this video is my opinion and my opinion alone. It does not represent any other entity, studio or employer, past, present or future that I work on. With that said, let's begin. Today I want to talk about smartphone gaming and with the reason why I believe smartphone gaming has not taken off in the hardcore way that companies usually want them to. I believe we have entered an age where where mobile gaming as we know it is losing its power. Gacha games and other casual, they're not as prevalent as they were back in the 2010s. With games like Angry Birds and all of that stuff, they're not the rage anymore. People have become a little bit tired of them. The gacha market is saturated. There's still a lot of people that play them and there's still a market for that. But the market is so saturated that studios are looking into creating other kind of games. They still make gacha games, but they're looking into the hardcore audience like console and PC gaming. We have seen efforts, especially from companies like Apple, to bring console gaming to iPhone. Recently, we got Resident Evil 4 and Resident Evil Village for the newest iPhone. Dead Stranding is also playable too. Trials of Mana, on the other hand, is playable on Android as well. Some of those games either run better on a phone than on the Switch or won't even run on the Nintendo Switch. I mean, the latest Resident Evil game cannot run natively on the Switch. I mean, you can play Resident Evil 8 Village on your Switch, but it has to be through cloud gaming, and most people don't want to deal with cloud gaming due to the input lag and other complications that Wi-Fi brings to the table. Mobile companies are trying to get into that space with their devices, and you might argue, well, yeah, Resident Evil 4 barely runs on the iPhone, and it's not an ideal experience, but let's face it, it's quite important impressive to have one of the 2023's Game of the Year nominees on your phone like that. Just think about it. Resident Evil 4 Remake was released last year and it's already running on a phone. Even if it's not the best experience, it is quite impressive. It is an experience that actually, if you think about it, did not release on the Xbox One. But to be honest, I haven't really played it on iPhone. I'm not an iPhone user myself, but I actually think that's kind of impressive. A lot of this third-party Switch game could run on a smartphone if they were ported correctly. The problem is no one is considering their phone as a gaming device. So the market and audience for those type of games in that sort of platform is extremely limited. Even though we have some pretty cool exclusives like Sonic Dream Team available on Apple Arcade, I haven't seen people really talking about the game because not every single person is willing to invest on an iPhone just to play Sonic Dream Team. And I have heard that it is actually the best Sonic game released in the last few years and I really want to get into it, but I'm not an iPhone user myself. I really want to play it, but I'm just hoping for a console release. We still have this image that smartphones are not the ideal way to play those kind of experiences. That the platform limits our experience since they are hardly optimized for the platform. Every game that releases on a smartphone needs to have touch controls into integrated into it. And why? Because the platform is not suited to play those games. Most people, including me, don't want to deal with touch controls, don't want to deal with pressing buttons in a touch screen to make Sonic jump. Why? Because you don't have the same feedback. You don't have the feedback of where your thumb is pressing and if you're actually pressing on the right spot, as you usually have it on a controller. So dealing with touch controls is pretty much ignoring our sense of touch that allows us to distinguish the button that we have our finger on and allows us to feel other buttons and unconsciously map the button layout from the controller. That's the reason why we can use controllers so seamlessly. We feel where everything is and we map the controller on our heads. And answering the need for physical control for smartphones, we have seen an incredible push for mobile controllers. I even have one and I think they actually look and feel pretty cool. You pretty much stick your controller like this and bang you have some sort of handheld console here now my phone is fairly old so i'm not gonna run a every game that is releasing on the app store on the play store it's quite old so yeah don't laugh about it but these little controllers make your phone feel closer to a handheld gaming console like the ps vita or the 3ds you can use them in both orientations or at least mine which is bluetooth based this is the thing it still doesn't quite 
feel like that. It feels closer to a PS Vita, for example, but it's not there yet. You still need to carry two pieces to be able to use the setup, which is not truly a comfortable experience. I wouldn't consider it to be truly pocketable. I don't like dealing with the thumbsticks in my pocket. I believe that for mobile gaming to start being taken seriously by its consumers, it's time to merge the controller into our phone. I mean, there's an entirely new market emerging from that concept, which is commonly known as the retro handhelds. They're just basically phones with controllers to stick to them. Yes, having a retro handheld for a phone would actually be somewhat of a clunky phone experience, right? It's, I mean, it's not just your gaming console, it's also your phone. It also needs to suit a lot of tasks that you need it for, the, for your daily use. So having a retro handheld wouldn't actually work for that. So I definitely don't don't think phones should necessarily stick or adopt the Switch Lite form factor, but I do think it's time for the PSP Go and Xperia Play concept to make a comeback. I mean, the way the controller just slides off the screen on the PSP Go would make so much sense nowadays. People love to say that the PSP Go was so ahead of its time due to its form factor and it being completely digital. It would make so much sense to have the PSP Go concept in a phone, just like the Xperia Play did back in the day. Nowadays, the Xperia Play came out too early when the smartphones were just like getting on stage. But now we have been dealing with smartphones for, for over a decade. We have grown into them. We have already accepted that they are completely digital and that you can buy your apps on the Play or on the app store, it's time for the concept to come back. Also, having that sort of controller could actually be much more intuitive and much more comfortable and ergonomic. Why isn't that concept a standard? I don't get why phones don't have a tier designed with a concept like that, especially gaming phones. They have so much power built into them, built into those little machines. But you still need to use a mobile controller for them. Especially gaming phones should actually be sold more like this sort of console that's also your phone, like the Xperia Play. I also don't get why there isn't a Samsung Galaxy S24 Gaming Edition or Controller Edition or whatever that includes on the phone. I also don't understand why iPhone and Apple have not released a tier like that on their phones with the push they are making to get console gamers into the Apple ecosystem. Imagine this. When they revealed the iPhone 15 and they showed up that Resident Evil 4 remake was running in it, imagine that when they show you that, they pull out the new iPhone in landscape mode and they slide the screen up to reveal a controller integrated into it. Boom! That would have been such a cool reveal. With the push they're making, I mean, we have have the trending we have Resident Evil like they go with creators like Hironobu Sakaguchi and they tell them like hey we want a new RPG on our platform on Apple Arcade we want them we want Fantation to be Apple exclusive and then you have the game that it didn't reach the audience it was expected to because no one really wants to play on a phone because a phone is not suited for that phones are not designed as gaming consoles but they are making the push it's time to merge the phone concept with the console concept and have your PSP Go or Xperia Play concept in it. It doesn't mean that every tier or phone like needs to have this, but if you have your most expensive tier or a mid tier that has this phone, this controller included, then you're tackling that market. You're also tackling the retro handheld markets. Revealing the next gen phone like that would also be the beginning for people to take mobile gaming in a more serious fashion. You would have mobile games and streaming apps like xCloud on your phone without too much hassle available for a quick play session at any time. Honestly, I just would go nuts with it. And it's not only that phones should include this concept, why aren't there any phone cases that work over that concept, that work over that design? Yes, I am aware that there was a prototype from Razer that was called the Razer Jungle Cat. For those who don't know, it was a prototype developed by Razer, which was pretty much the PSP Go concept 
crafted into a phone case. I would have bought that in an instant. Even if you didn't have a joystick, I would actually love it. So many indie games don't require a joystick and can be fully played with a D-pad. For example, Crypt of the Necro Dancer. I'm a huge Crypt of the Necro Dancer fan. Just imagine you're waiting in line, you have your sort of Xperia Play concept with it at all times, and then you start considering your phone as a serious platform for gaming, and you start considering investing in more games to play on your phone. Why? Because you have this controller in it. A lot of people are not into those casual games, into gacha games, into those puzzle games like Candy Crush. They're not into that. You're leaving an entire sector away from your platform without a controller, and you having to take two pieces just to be able to use your phone like that outside. It's just not intuitive, but by that point, let's just take our Nintendo Switch. It's all in the controller. The interface you deal with is one of the most important things. When you play on Xbox, PlayStation, or Nintendo, you know exactly on which console you're playing because you understand that the controller feels different. The controller is just that important, and it is literally the way you're interacting with your game. It is probably the most important thing on the, on the gaming hardware. It's just a given for us since we have grown so used into having these controllers for or about 40 years. Why aren't phones shipping like this? Why don't they have a controller integrated into them and tackle a new sector and start expanding this new sector that they actually want a piece of the cake from? We have Resident Evil 4, but we have no true means of playing Resident Evil 4 on our, on our iPhones. Well, I don't have an iPhone, but on iPhone. <laughs> yes, the PSP Go was ahead of its time, but now it is time. So tell me, do you agree with me? Do you like mobile gaming? Do you like gacha games? I'm not saying bad gacha games are bad, it's just like the mar market is saturated and a lot of people don't want to leave their gacha games for a new gacha. Like you invest a lot of money on them that you just don't want to leave this gacha for a new gacha. So the market is, has become saturated. I'm not saying they're bad games. They are very well designed and they have their audience, but there's an entirely entire new sector that they could tackle. So tell me, do you like gacha games? Do you like mobile gaming? Do you disagree with me? Do you agree with me? Do you like mobile controllers? Do you have your own mobile controller like I do? Which game would you like to see ported to Android or iPhone? Let me know. The more we talk about these kind of things, the more we understand our gaming industry. Thank you so, so much for watching. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you so much. I love you guys. Bye.